Well, again, this is Craig from the Preppersstop.com or ForbiddenKnowledge.info, specializing in radiation. Now, here's this will be a very specialty video. A lot of you will appreciate it. They have equipment and don't know what's wrong with it. I can give you some basic tips on how to operate them. Uh, it might last a little longer time. This is called a radiological survey meter. If you don't know this the difference between this and a Geiger counter, you need to go back and watch some other videos we've done. This is what typically what most of you will have, and you, you'll call it a Geiger counter, but it's not. And the reason you don't think it works is because it's not a Geiger counter and you can't measure anything around your house because there's nothing I can legally own to make the needle move on this. But for operational purposes, and I have different models here and we can show you some differences. Typically, this is a very robust unit. Most of them you'll have is made by the company called Victorine. You'll, you'll, generally, you'll have this is model 715-1. Uh, most of them will be a 1A, but you might also have a 1B. That was from 1964. This particular one is from 1962. They made about 260,000 of them. This unit here, a very, very, I have pallet, pallets and pallets of these. I have thousands of these, and very rarely do I see them that don't work right of this particular model. It's the most robust model out there. And how to use them, basically, if you don't have the instructions, here's, here's what you can do. And I hope the hammer is going to pick this up well enough. You see the needle's at zero right now. I'm first going to turn this on. If you have one of these, you have to follow along. When you turn it on, you see the needle moved. And now what, I, what I've turned it on to is something called zero. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to zero that needle. You see it's not at zero right now, so I'm trying to watch the screen, but I want to put that needle at zero. So I'm moving this little knob here that says zero. And what I'm doing there is I'm adjusting for battery voltage. Now, without the aid of seeing, being able to see the screen very well, let's say that's a zero. I can't see it very well. But then I take the, the knob and go back to off, and then I do circuit check. Now, the needle goes off into the red zone that shows it's functioning properly. And that's all you can really check with this because there's nothing you can legally own to make the needle move on this. So, again, this is for high-level gamma. You're not going to be able to... So, if you're trying to measure anything around the house, the reason you're not getting any reading is because you can't. It's not meant for that. If you want to play around with things, low levels of radiation, then you need a Geiger counter, not a survey meter. Um, very robust unit. Takes 1D battery. The one, this is a model from 1962. It just takes 1D battery. Very simple to use. Uh, you don't have to take the case apart to measure the gamma rays because gamma rays go right through the metal of the case. Uh, if you're closing it, make sure it's in the groove right. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to stamp. It should stamp fairly easily. Otherwise, you're not in the groove where that gasket is in. Um, basically, that's it for this model. It's very simple to use. If you're wondering about the R on yours or on any of them out there, from 1962, this model, they had a two-year calibration cycle when the government owned them at the time. But in 1964, they made a change in the electronics when they first went in for their first calibration. The retrofit sticker or stamp was put on there. You'll find an R on a lot of these. Sometimes they look a little different, but they'll all have a, probably have an R on them somehow, either a stamp or a sticker. That means it was retrofitted, and now it had a four-year calibration cycle. So they made a small change in electronics. Now, the Model 717. Those of you who have these, if you aren't familiar with it, we aren't going to get into a lot of detail, but if you have one that says 717, it's made by Victorine. It was made in 1964. And I'm having trouble getting this one open. <clears throat> this one hasn't been open in a while, so I'm having trouble. The bottom chamber comes apart, and we're not going to get, get it open for this video. But here's the point I want to make about the 717. Make sure you have it right when you're putting it back together because there's a nipple in there that's offset and I can show you them in the top chamber. The top chamber always comes open easily, the bottom chamber sometimes is harder. Uh, there's a, a nipple in there that's not in the center and the circuit board has a corresponding hole that that goes in. So make sure you're putting in there right. Don't try to force it. Same with the other chamber. There's an offset nipple in there. You need to make sure they're lined up. But here's the big issue with these. Uh, of the, the hundreds and hundreds of these I have, I got about a 40% failure rate. You know why? It's because of this dial indicator. Now this is one that has been actually replaced. This one you typically don't see. But if you have one that looks like this, and this is a different model, but you can see, if you see if it's black, see the difference between that one and this one? Okay, this one's got a clear rim on it. This one has a metal rim. Now if it's a flat metal rim, you're probably, in, you're probably good to go. But if it has this little bump on it, this little raised kind of circular uh, radius, on it. You probably have one that doesn't work with the gauge. Here's, here's one, here's a Model 717 that has that particular one. This one happens to work, okay? But it's, it's not an easy thing to get one that works with that type of gauge because the dial indicator on that, this gauge, goes bad on a lot of them. So if you get no response from yours, the machine might work, 
but probably your dial indicator is going bad if it's that style of dial indicator. You see, I hope I'm making that clear. In other words, if you have one that looks like this or, a, or one with a flat metal instead of that radius metal, it probably still works. If you have one like this, it's a very good chance it might not work. Now, I've seen them last. These are already 50 years old, folks, more than 50 years old. This was made in 1964. This was the last model made for civil defense. And if it has that raised edge and it's not responding at all, that's probably your problem. Uh, Geiger counters. Got one right here. Geiger counters, of course, with the wand. The number one thing that goes wrong with these, of course, if you have an Anton, you got problems with the battery contacts because it takes five batteries and they're very finicky. The Victorine probably is the best one, in my opinion. The Victorine takes four batteries. Uh, the ENIs take two or four batteries, D batteries. If you got the, the, the much aligned Lionel the brand, it takes two batteries, but those aren't quite as good as the Victorine. Sorry, all you Lionel collectors. But the Victorine model 6A, 6B, uh, or model 6 of Victorine are generally the most robust. People are always worried about the Geiger Muller tubes. No, the number one thing that goes wrong with that, if you're not getting any response, is again the dial indicator. I have hundreds of these things that need new dial indicators and they're not easy to fix and they cost a lot of money. You don't generally have to worry. I've very little, very few, very rarely do I have to change the Geiger Muller tubes. It's usually the dial indicator. So if you get no response, here's what you do. If you have the headphones, put the headphones on, try again because the dial indicator doesn't work, but you'll still get the, the ticks in the headphones. That's the way you can tell that your dial indicator is bad. So that's the number one problem with the Geiger counters. Um, dosimeter chargers and dosimeters. Now, dosimeters, uh, let's talk about that sometimes. I test them for drift. I, I set them to zero, and if after a week, when I do the next show, if they still haven't drifted visibly, as far as I'm concerned, they, they're good to go. They have no drift, okay? They still can drift over time, but typically they're meant to be used like on an hourly or a day basis, not weeks or months, okay? So if you're trying to use a dosimeter to measure long-term radiation, they just don't work that way. That's not what they're designed for. So you got to get that out of your head too. The dosimeter chargers. Now here's a whole other th issue. The dosimeter chargers of this model here, this one happens to be a Jordan. There's also one made by... Uh, Let's make one made in New York, what's it called? Uh, um, uh, industrial, uh, electronic industrial hardware. Uh, those, both of those models are fairly problematic. About, of the thousands I have, and I pull them out of the box, I find that about 30 to 40 percent of them have problems. About 5 percent don't work at all, but about 30 to 40 percent of them have problems. But by what I mean by problems, the needle jumps around a lot. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've you probably have one. If you have one, if you're watching this video and you're watching this far, you probably have one. You're wondering what's wrong with yours. Electronically, I can't answer your question. I don't know what's wrong with them electronically. Yeah, you probably go in there and replace the resistor or capacitor or whatever the, the technical jargon is. I don't know. It's 60s technology. You hams and a lot of people who know about these older electronics would know exactly the schematics in there. So if you know a lot about electronics, you can probably figure it out. Uh, inside there, um, rarely do I have the bulbs go out but there's a spare bulb in there anyway, no matter which model you have. But if you have one made by Jordan or by Industrial Electronic Hardware, probably they're not as smooth as they should be. The needle jumps around. It can still be used as long as you still get that needle to land somewhere on the scale of that dosimeter, then you can still use it. In other words, if you can only take it to 20 or 50, that's your starting point. Then you just subtract that from your final reading. So they can still be used. If you can't get it to get the reticle to do anything at all or it jumps completely off the scale, then you'll have to either fix it or get another one. Uh, if you're fortunate to have a Bendix brand, I don't have one here to show you, but if you have a dosimeter charger, yellow like this, that's made by the Bendix Corporation, Cincinnati Division, those usually work much smoother. I have maybe only a 5% failure rate on those versus about a 30 to 40% on these. So the Bendix are generally a better brand. Don't ask me to pick out and search for them because I don't have very many. Those are, those are a little harder to come by. There's, they're not rare any, per, per se. It's just those are the keepers. Okay. Um, so that's some of the very basics. We can do more in-depth videos later about details and how to work on these things and how to check for problems. But in the meantime, we're going to cut this video short now. This is Craig from ForbiddenKnowledge.info or theprepperstop.com. So long.